You missed some important news from the LGBTQ plus community this week. To ensure you are current, we are recapping that important news. Here's what you may have missed. It's Queer Up Sports, which is funny that I'm reporting on it. <laughs> Dodgers <laughs> Pride Night shows higher than usual attendance despite protests against drag nuns. The LA Dodgers Pride Night stirred up controversy when the team chose to honor the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence a move that drew protests from the religious right. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who recently launched his 2024 presidential bid, tweeted in support of the protesters and claimed the stadium was virtually empty. Some conservatives circulated photos and videos which were reportedly taken before the opening pitch of a nearly empty stadium. DeSantis said in a tweet, quote, the virtually empty stadium for the game itself was a powerful image. Americans are fed up with the nonsense and are fighting back, end quote. According to Forbes, Friday's game surpassed the team's average attendance of 47,800 people. Joe Jurek, Senior Director of Public Relations for the Dodgers, said in a comment, quote, our paid attendance on Friday night was 49,074 attendees, leading, quote, leading up to the team's 10th annual LGBTQ plus Pride Night. The Dodgers disinvited and then reinvited the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, a nonprofit order of queer and trans nuns, which some religious conservatives found to be offensive to Christianity and Catholicism. Conservatives appear gleeful that they may have just scored another culture war win, this time through Major League Baseball's Los Angeles Dodgers, but the claim to have successfully boycotted a Dodgers game for its LGBTQ plus pride, participation, and guests notably echoed by presidential candidate Ron DeSantis appears to be false. Mm -hmm. Let's queer up trans rights. Istanbul Trans Pride Parade is blocked by Turkish police. Activists in Istanbul turned out to march against the discrimination of trans people, despite officials banning the city's trans pride parade over the weekend. Over fears, it posed a threat to family values. However, police were nevertheless able to prevent parade participants from demonstrating at the city's central Taksim Square with large-scale roadblocks. The governor of Istanbul, Duvat Gol, had already announced in a tweet that he would not allow any events, quote, that endangered our institution of the family, end quote. Other cities in Turkey also banned marches and events related to the annual June Pride Month, which takes place every year around the world in June and serves, among other things, to improve the visibility of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer communities. Nevada's Republican governor defines GOP and signs bill mandating trans health care coverage. Nevada's Republican governor, Joe Lombardo, has signed a bill requiring all insurance companies and Medicaid to cover gender-affirming care, including surgery for both kids and adults. The law also bans insurance companies from engaging in certain discrimination based on gender identity or expression. There are no religious exemptions for businesses or health care providers. All employers are required to adhere to the standards of care from the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. Lombardo has not published a press release about signing the bill, nor has he tweeted about it, but he told reporters that all the bill does is mandate the insurance industry to continue following existing state policy. According to the Nevada Globe, the bill passed along party lines without a single Republican voting in its favor. Some believe Lombardo signed the bill in hopes it would sway Democrats to support funding for the construction of a new Major League Baseball stadium on the Las Vegas Strip for the A's, who are planning a move to the city from Oakland, California. A 2020 report from USA Today said Nevada passed 34-plus laws to protect LGBTQ plus people between 2009 and 2019 and has no laws that deny LGBTQ plus people rights. 
Not surprisingly, it also has one of the highest percentages of LGBTQ plus people in the country. Let's queer up LGBTQ plus civil rights. Pete Buttigieg issues warning about LGBTQ plus rights, saying, I don't think anything is safe. Situation of a upper middle class married white gay dude is not the same as uh, a trans kid in Texas or, uh, uh, or any number of LGBTQ people of color uh, trying to survive right now. Um, but I think we're actually in an exceptionally early moment in terms of some figures deciding that there's utility, political utility, in targeting um, trans people and, and LGBTQ people more generally. I mean, look how many people voted against marriage equality, which should have been an easy one um, just recently as a few months ago. And so I think it's a reminder that none of what's been gained is really uh, locked in. I, I, I don't think anything is safe. I mean, Roe just fell, and that was a lot of land for longer than I'd been alive. Nothing is safe, especially right now, when you have one side that has a maximalist commitment to tearing down every norm uh, and, uh, and law they don't like. So where does that put us? And by the way, why is it happening? I think it's happening because there are some people who find it easier to pick on really vulnerable young people than to explain why they voted no on money for roads and bridges or stood in the way of $35 insulin. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg knows everything when it comes to airline mergers, electric vehicle chargers, or the massive infrastructure law that may become President Joe Biden's legacy. But ask him about the ongoing attack on LGBTQ plus rights in this country, and the most senior ever gay official in the U.S. government grows more intense. In a recent interview with Time, he said hate mongering is not fading, but getting worse. His statement holds more gravity after 36 Republican senators and 169 members of the GOP House Caucus voted against last year's Respect for Marriage Act. He also mentioned, quote, there's utility, political utility, in targeting trans people and LGBTQ people more generally, end quote. This is the frightening reality of LGBTQ plus rights in this country. After securing a victory on abortion, the culture warriors have turned to identity politics as an animating force. Pointing at the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which of course had been the law of the land longer than he had been alive, Secretary Buttigieg says, quote, I don't think anything is safe, end quote. Let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Thousands defy thunderstorms and DeSantis to show up to Stonewall Pride in drag. The Stonewall Pride Parade and Festival kicked off without any hiccups Saturday afternoon as thousands of people braved the heat and rain to descend on Wilton Manors in rainbow umbrella hats, tutus, and t-shirts reading things like Don't Say DeSantis and Drag Is Not a Crime. Saturday's festival came, with, came exactly one month after Governor Ron DeSantis signed SB 1438 titled Protection of Children, legislation that prohibits anyone from knowingly admitting a child to an adult live performance. This year, Pride came with new rules. No profanity, nudity, or sexualized conduct. No items that mimic or suggest genitals. Those dressed in drag could march in the parade but not perform in public. Thousands of celebrants came dressed in partial or full drag, frequently for their first time, as a protest against the new legislation. The weather was another concern Saturday, though the event went on without an issue until the evening when a thunderstorm temporarily delayed the parade at about 7 p.m. However, the parade kicked off as usual 15 minutes later. Neither, neither the new rules nor the weather appeared to dampen the turnout. Keep watching the only television news in the world from our LGBTQ plus community and stay informed on everything that is important for and about our diverse LGBTQ plus community.